Imagine we were able to predict space weather and foresee when a space storm was coming. We could plan space shuttle missions more effectively and keep our astronauts safe. We could design and build satellites that would withstand radiation, better protect our power lines and power grids, and have alternative measures in place for when our radio communications are down. This is what Catherine McWilliams at the University of Saskatchewan and the SuperDarn team of experts are striving to achieve. SuperDarn, or the Super Dual Auroral Radar Network, is an international network of high-frequency radars located throughout the northern and southern hemispheres. Its purpose is to monitor and study the interactions between space weather and the Earth's atmosphere to understand its effects on our communications, energy, and navigation infrastructures here on Earth. Space weather starts from the sun, actually. So if you've ever seen on, on TV, you see these images of these big, huge explosions off the sun, and all this material is coming out into space. And then when that approaches the Earth, it starts to interact with, with our, the Earth's magnetic field. The Earth has a big magnetic field, and it kind of creates a bubble that protects us. But some of the energy can get into that bubble, and it can be dumped into the atmosphere. And when it gets dumped in, that's when you see the northern lights, and that's when you get big magnetic deflections. When a magnetic storm is affecting us, you'll see increases in electric current in pipelines and power grids, and they'll fluctuate very quickly and it could trip some systems on the grids. Uh, you can also have uh, disruptions to radio communication. So if a plane is flying at really high latitudes doing an Arctic polar route, it can interfere with the radio communications and at some points it can actually black it out. Surface weather is complicated enough and you've just got pressure gradients and you know temperature differences and stuff. If you get up into space, then you add electric and magnetic fields that have you know push particles in different directions and there's all sorts of other forces going on. There's electrical current, so it gets much more complicated. And the laboratory that we're, we're studying is the size of the solar system, basically. It will still be a while before we can get our daily space weather forecast on TV. But researchers and engineers have come a long way over the last two decades. SuperDarn's radars have been scanning the skies and collecting data every minute for 20 years. With this data set, the SuperDarn team of experts can start working with pipeline and power grid companies to study the effects of space weather on their infrastructures.